Everybody love the Lord. Shout amen. amen. Grab a hold of somebody's hands beside you. That's it. Stretch across the aisle. I love the when you do that because I got news for you. I go to some churches, it's like they're doing this. <laughs> like they think the pew is going to get up and run away. It's not going to do that. The seat's going to be right there. Now, do one thing for me right now. Smile at me. Let me look at you. Yeah, some of you still like your mother-in-law came to live with the rest of your life. <laughs> Smile at that person by you. Tell them you're looking better than I've ever seen you look in your life. Give me a little more volume on the mic, please. Just a little more. I love to do that because I can see one brother looking at another brother saying, I ain't going to tell you that. <laughs> Threefold prayer. I want you to pray. Number one, Lord, anoint me to hear the word. You should be as anointed to hear it as I'm anointed to preach it. Come on, saints. Amen. Amen. You know, people think, well, hey, preacher, I'm here. You bless me. I can't bless you. It takes the anointing of the Holy Spirit to bless you. You see this thing right here? That's not an ear. That's a faith gate. A faith gate. Faith cometh by hearing by the Word of God. So number one, Lord, anoint this ear that I might hear. Anoint my heart that I might receive. Secondly, pray for me. I've heard me with the anointing, without the anointing, and you don't want to hear me without the anointing. Because you didn't get all dressed up and nice looking and all of this stuff to hear a dead, dried up, all to be buried sermon. Amen. So number two, God, please anoint the preacher. Number three, drop your hands for a moment. Don't move. Just drop your hands and let the pastor of this house, the man of God of this house, Obed Martinez, let him know how much you love and appreciate him. Ah, that's it. That's it. Well, I, well he's, not, he's not even here. You'll hear about it. Now, where would he be? Where would he be without Lisette, his precious wife? So let her know how much you love her. Amen, 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 amen. Now, join hands again. I didn't come just to see Lisette and Obed because I've been knowing them for years. Amen. They're like my own children, and they're... Babies are like my grandchildren. But understand and know we're not here just to have fellowship. We're here to have church. So I want you to pray, thirdly, that God will meet every need in this altar service tonight. Largest crowd I've ever stood before in my life was 2 million people. That was in India. I mean, as far as you could see, there was nothing but people. I, amazing. But I've stood before 10. It don't matter how big the crowd, it's how big our God is to meet our need. So if you got a need tonight, God is here to meet it. If you believe that, shout aloud, amen. amen. So with your hands united together, lift them heavenwardly, invite his, invoke his anointing upon you, upon me, and the service tonight. Come on, and the altar service. Come on, everybody pray right out of your heart. Right out of your heart. Right out of your heart. That's it. Come on. Come on. Pray. I want to hear you pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Meet every need tonight. Now say it with me, everybody. Father, in the name of Jesus, anoint me to hear the word. Anoint the preacher. Meet every need in the altar service. And shouted at him, devil. devil, come on, he's deaf and he's definitely dumb. Devil, devil. Get, out get out of this house. We rebuke you now in the name of Jesus, for we are free in the power of the Holy Spirit. You believe that? Clap your hands and shout amen. Hallelujah. 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 Will you sing a song with me? Oh, come, let us adore him. 
First thing, I've never seen anybody sing without opening your mouth. Some of you are not opening your mouth. Uh, Brother Brock, I can't sing. He loves the crow as well as the canary. I have a spiritual father. His name is T.L. Lowry. T.L. is in glory now. He died a couple of months ago. But ladies and gentlemen, he was the worst singer I've ever heard in my life. Stood by me one night singing Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace. Zing grace. That's the way he sang it. How sweet the sound. I turned around, looked at him, I said, T.L., you are the worst singer I've ever heard in my entire life. He looked at me with that big old smile of his, and he said, I ain't singing to you. <laughs> and I saw some of you, you were singing, and you were just sort of sliding it out of your mouth. <laughs> Sing it out, because you're not singing to me. You're not singing to be heard, and you're not singing but, you know, to anybody beside you. So you're singing it to the Lord. So everybody sing it with me to him. People ask me, how can you sing on national television, millions of people? I ain't singing to them. I'm singing to the Lord. Amen. So I want you to sing it. Are you ready? Are you ready? Here we go. Oh, come, let us ha. Ah. Now you're singing. Oh, come. Him, Christ. The, now, second thing. Second thing, we're going to sing it one more time. But this time, I want you to sing it from your heart. So, well, Brother Brock, it's a Christmas carol. It's not Christmas. Honey, this is not a Christmas carol. It is our national. It is our Christian anthem, I should say. It is our Christian anthem where we're going to sing unto him how much. We, where would you be if it wasn't for Jesus? How many of you would probably be dead? Hold up your hand. Hold them up high. How many of you would probably be divorced? Hold up your hand. Let me. Yeah, you got some brave people around here, Pastor. <laughs> How many of you would probably be in jail? <laughs> but look where you are. You're not dead. You're not divorced. You're not in jail. You're worshiping God. So I want you to put everything you've got into it. You ready? And I want you to sing it. Don't, oh, jump. And I'm not talking about how loud you sing it. I want you to sing it in worship to him. Praise him. Adore him. Oh, come, let us adore. Come on, close your eyes. Don't look at me. Come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us. Now you're singing. Him. Christ the Lord. Sing it again. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Now give him another applause right now. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want to do this. I'm going to count to three, even here. You're excited, and I'm excited, and I'm excited, and you're excited, and we're all excited. Amen. But I'm going to count to three, and when I reach the number three, I want you to give him the loudest shout of praise that you can. You're not here because you've got one of the greatest pastors in America. You're not here because you've got this good music. You're not good here because you got this good staff or that nice chair. You're here for one reason and one reason only. That's the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody said, Brother Steve, watch the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I've had some theologians declare that it's God's unmerited favor toward me. I think they're talking more about his mercy or his grace. 
You want to talk about the grace of God? Now, see, I'm from Georgia. We talk like that over in Georgia. Come on now. Amen. And if you were to ask a Georgian, what is the grace of God? They'd look at you and say, it's God doing something for me I could never do for myself. Amen. No way I could erase my name off the corners of hell, but there are erasure marks in hell because of his grace. He's written my name in the Lamb's book of life because of his grace. I'm healed. I'm blessed. I'm, over, over, I'm an overcomer because of his grace. So when I reach, hey, I do this everywhere I go, Billy. Every church I go to. I go to dead churches sometimes. Come on, amen. I was in a church that was so dead. I know you wanted to ask. It was so dead that while I was preaching, a brother died right in the middle of the service. They called the life squad to come and get him. They took out 10 people before they found the one that was really dead. Come on, amen. <laughs> Teasing. Some of you are looking like, oh, oh. But when I reach that number three, I want you to knock me off this stage. I want you to shout unto the Lord because you've got the victory. You've got the touch. You've got the message. You've got the truth. Come on. You're not, li you're not a lie. You're not living a lie. You are truth itself. Amen. Somebody said, oh, Jesus is the life and the truth and, and, and the way. No, 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 no. He is the way, the only way, the only truth. He's not just a truth. He is truth itself. He's not just a lifestyle. He is life itself. Are you hearing me? He's not just a way. He is the way. Come on, amen. So when I reach that number three, I want to hear a shout, praise, magnify God. You ready? Are you ready? One, two, three, shout. Awesome. God bless you. I love every one of you. You may be seated. I'm glad my wife is with me tonight. Baby, will you stand? You don't, you don't have to come up here. Just stand up here. Bring me that Bible. Amen. This is my wife. Somebody said, oh, uh, I don't believe in short romances. I met my wife on Thursday night at a convention. I asked her to marry me the following Tuesday night. Baby, I ain't through with you. Come on back up here. <laughs> Come on back up here. I met her. Are you ready for this? October the 21st is our wedding anniversary. This coming October, we will have been married, or we will be married, 50 years. It's all her. It ain't me. It's her patience and her love and my love for her. It does work. Amen. It does work. Billy keeps asking me for advice, and I keep telling him, all you got to do is love one another and marry to stay married. Could I get a loud amen on that? Yeah. Marry to stay married. I'm very thankful for our 50 years of wedding, you know, of, of being married together. Le oh, it's not, oh, it's been easy. Are you kidding me? It's been the rough, 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 some of the roughest times I've ever had in my life. But my wife has been close there by me, and I've been by her, and each one of us giving 100%, we're still together. Come on, amen. That's not to put anybody down. That's just to tell you that God works in marriages. Somebody clap your hands and shout amen. God works in marriages. Amen. Testify, baby. I want you to say something. Well, I want to say that I'm proud of each and every one of you that is here tonight. Amen. I see the number 12 up there. That number excites me because I was here in one of the first services in the school that you started in. And look what God has done. All the lives, everyone that has been touched by the Holy Spirit. And the thing about it, each one of you is a minister and a testimony of God's grace and his forgiving power 
in this community. And uh, let me just tell you a little secret, and this will be the last thing. I have a friend in Louisiana. She was here last uh, Sunday night. They watch y'all on um, however they do. They, know, they knew Pastor Obed before I told him. I said, you ever hear of Pastor Obed? You should follow him. Oh, we follow him. We follow him. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody knows about you. Everybody knows about you. Amen. That's good. That's great because the excitement of what God can do in people's lives Amen. is here. Amen. So I'm so glad she's here and part of me. Amen. On your way out, my wife will be in the back. This is a Bible that I sell. I love this Bible. It's called the New Jerusalem Bible or Spirit of Israel Bible. How many believe that Israel is a pointing, is a line pointing us to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? First 126 pages is nothing but Israel. Tells you everything you want to know about Israel. Then King James Version, and then there is a concordance, and then... Bob Rogers, Dr. Rogers, who's a very dear friend of mine, teaches you how to memorize the Word of God. So it's four Bibles in one. Normally it sells for like 150 bucks, but because I love y'all. Y'all know I love y'all. No, because I love you. You could buy this for 60 bucks. Back there with my wife. We do take Master Charge and Visa. Billy, come up here, son. No, no, not up here, but right here. I award you this Bible. Amen. Praise God. So on your way out, go by and see my pretty wife, and she'll take care of you. Got your Bible. I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians 1 and 9. And we're going to talk about something that is very important. You're talking about the Holy Spirit. There is one thing that is powerful in our lives, His faithfulness through the Holy Spirit. Do you understand that? God does not bless you except by the Holy Spirit. Every blessing from God comes by the Holy Spirit. How do you know, Brother Brock? Because in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, he makes this parable. Only time that the Holy Ghost ever bragged on himself. He said, it's not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. What's the most important word in that verse? What? Nope. One word, just one word. Power. Spirit, I'll tell you what it is. It's by. Not by might, not by power. Might meaning military might, power meaning intellectual ability, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. And all things working in your life, the faithfulness of God is by his spirit. And I emphasize to you tonight, this morning about, so 2.30, I, I don't really like to do that, but the Lord woke me up. I said, Lord, please let me sleep. I'm tired. I'm jet lagged. No, you got to go pray. So when I was praying last night, early this morning, the Lord spoke to me, and he said, some people need what you're going to preach on tonight. And I'm going to talk about the faithfulness of God that is accomplished in our lives through the power of the Holy Spirit. When we are dependent on upon God and His faithfulness, then the Holy Spirit works miracles in our lives. Come on, amen. He works miracles in our life. In fact, I'm going to believe God. Is it okay, Billy? If I do this, Pastor Billy, I'm sorry, that's Billy to me. But I'm going to pray for the sick tonight. Do you believe God can heal? How many believe God can heal? Lift up both hands and shout amen then I'm going to pray and believe God that he'll heal every, oh, wouldn't it be wonderful if that everybody that was sick walked out of this house by the power of God, healed. Come on, amen. And Obed is leading you in the right direction because this, this is what makes it happen. When you have miracles, people want to come and watch. When you get on fire, people will, come and want, will want to come and watch you burn. Come on, amen. So let's get on fire by the Holy Spirit. Got your Bible, 1 Corinthians 1 and 9, in the Amplified. God, now listen to these words. God is faithful, reliable, trustworthy, and therefore ever true to his promise. He can, and oh, I'm shouting this out to you, he can be depended on. By him you were called into companionship and the 
present the participation with his son Jesus Christ our Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the power and the relationship with Christ because of God's faithfulness to his word. It just it just didn't happen. It did because God said it was going to happen and made it happen. Come on, amen. He said it was going to happen and he made it happen. That's the way God works. Probably the most desired and cherished virtue in any person is faithfulness. One CEO wrote this statement, ability must be coupled with reliability to be productive. Ability means responsibility and is of little value without it. Oh, I'm going to say this statement and I hope it gets, oh Lord, please. I felt this in my spirit because some of you need Right now, you're going through battles, you're going through valleys, going through storms, you're in the midst of a storm, but I'm happy to tell you, you can count on God. I'm going to say it again. You can count on God. Why? Numbers 23, 19 amplified. God is not a man that he should tell or act a lie. You know who the liar is? The devil. If his lips are moving, he's lying. But if God tells you something, it's a truth. We're living in an age, my dear God, have mercy. We're living in a society right now. I have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. I have no idea in November. I don't know what will happen. I don't know what's going to happen in the Middle East. But praise God, I know his truth, and I know his truth holds tomorrow, and we are going to make it. Turn around and somebody say, we're going to make it. Do you believe that? Yeah. Now look at me. Do you believe that? Yeah. You see, a lot of times you can say stuff like that from a pulpit. Say, oh, yeah, praise God. Yeah, amen. It was like Martha, but we, we, we have people like Martha. She came rushing out. Lazarus was dead. Jesus came walking into the city. Oh, Lord, if you'd have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. But even now, whatever you ask God, he'll do it for you. And Jesus, the Son of God, looked at her and said, he's going to live again. Her response to him was, whoo, glory, let's get over there in that tomb and get him out. I want to see him again. Is that what she said? Now, we know that, Lord, in actuality, in the resurrection morning, she started to give the Son of God a Sunday school lesson. She did not realize nor understand who, oh, my God, understand the presence she was in. Some of you even tonight do not even understand the presence you're in. You're not here at Obed's church. You're not here sitting on a pew in a building. You are in the house of Almighty God. This place has been sanctified fully with the power of the Holy Spirit. Come on, amen. So much so that if you'll just ask, God will respond. Well, how do you know? Because he's faithful. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been preaching the gospel. Listen now. I've been preaching the gospel for 50 years. 50 years. Oh, that's been a wonderful bed of eating. <laughs> I fought hell just like you fight hell. But I'm happy to tell you, and I shout it to the top of my voice, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Come on, amen. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Glory to God. I am an overcomer. I'm a winner. Are you really? Yes. Have you been through my valley? I've been through everybody's valley. My father died when I was two, never had a father. Never knew what it was like to reach out and have a man grab me and say, love you, boy. Never been able to pick up my phone and say, Daddy, I ain't got no money. You got to help me. Send me some money. Like my son has done to me thousands of times. (laughs) But I had a mama, and mama was something else. That's why I'm preaching tonight. Praise God. She was old school before old school was old school. You know what I'm talking about? My, 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 my son, my youngest son, died at the hands of a drunk driver when he was 16. No, 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 no. I've been through the hell of things. I've been th- a human being like me, like you, never gets over the loss of a child. Somebody said, well, you just got to get out. What do you want me to do? Get over my son? Forget my son? 
put him in the background of my life. I'll never do that. He's as much a part of my life now as he's always been. But what I've tried to tell you is, what I'm trying to relate to you is the glorious truth that God is not a man that he should tell or act a lie. He said he'll keep me. He's kept me. How do you know he's going to keep you? Because he's kept me. How do you know he's going to make a way? Because he's made a way. How do you know he's going to open the door? Because he's opened so many doors that I cannot even declare. Why? That is God. That is God. If he says he will do it, it's his nature that he cannot lie. God will do it. Philippians 4 and 9. But God shall supply. I love that word supply. It means make full, fill up, no lack. In fact, if I could get all of you going out the door saying this one statement right now, you'd have more victory than you've ever had in your life. I love it. What are we going to do today, Brother Brock? We're going to trust in the reality that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not. Got a better word for you. Amplified renders it. I shall not lack. So say it with me. The Lord is my shepherd. I'm going to count to three. Wait, 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 wait. I'm going to get us organized. I want to count to three, and when I reach that number three, I want to hear you say it. Don't slide it out of your mouth. Don't go, no, don't climb it, stream it out. Affirmative, say it. Feel it here. See, the devil listens more to what you say than what you do. Amen, Brother Brock. If you don't amen me on some things, I'll just amen myself. The Lord is my shepherd. Glory to God. He's such an all-sufficient, supplies all of me. I don't lack. See, I, I like lack better than want. Because when you say want, it's like, I want something. No. But when you say, I don't lack, and when you confidently say it, I shall not lack, then my friend, you've got the victory. So I want you to say it with me. Are you ready? Sit up. Straighten your back, your back, that's it. I'm your teacher right now. And I want you to say it and say it aloud to where hell can hear. Because they're listening. If you say, the devil will jump all over you. How do you know, Brother Brock? <laughs> Come on, amen. Have you ever lost your faith? Sure I have. Have you ever struggled to believe? Of course I have. The only thing that's made it right is the power of the Holy Spirit in my life who makes my Father God real. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. But I want you to say it. Say it aloud. Let it be your theme. Let it be your thought as you go out the door. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. Here we go. One, two, three. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. One more time. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. That's what he's telling us. But my God shall supply all of my greed according to his riches. Now, you mean he's going to meet our needs? I don't know about you, but I like having my house payment paid. Come on, amen. I mean, ain't he going to give me a, a Rolls Royce? I, I thought it was planes, trains, and automobiles when you, when you preach all this. Pros Honey, there's no prosperity about it. When he said, above all things, I want you to prosper and be in good health, he's telling you right there in that verse, he said, I want you to release, pure Greek, true Greek, be released from anxiety. You know how many people are in the hospital because they're overwhelmed with anxiety? Why people are in divorce because they're overwhelmed with anxiety? Think something's better on the other side of the mountain. It ain't. How do you know? Been there. Got the cup, got the T-shirt. I can truthfully tell you the best place you can be is in the total, absolute will of Almighty God. Realizing and understanding that the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not lack. Come on, say it with me. The Lord. Say it again. The Lord. This is his promise. We don't lack anything. Now, what, what does... Faithfulness mean in the Bible. In the Old Testament, it's Amon. I, I'm, I'm slaying these words. I'm, I don't think Brian is here, so I can say what I want to say. 
Imuna. Amen. Get the word amen. Imuna. What does it mean? It means to sustain or support a foundation that God gives us. When you have a relationship that's right with God, you're building. Let me, let me tell you something. Let me make something very powerfully clear, clear to all of you. God does not dwell nor respond to drama. Hello? Anybody hearing what I'm saying? He don't respond to that. You go to the hospital, you find out somebody's dying or somebody's got cancer, and you go, ah, 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 ah. God don't respond to that. What does God respond to? All things are possible to him that believeth. What does God respond to? I'm more than a conqueror. I'm, I'm sure you probably have heard Obed speak this, but I love this. I love this, this illustration. Say it again with me. I'm more than a conqueror. Say it again. I'm Come on. Say it loud. I'm more. What does that mean? You've just said it. What does it mean? Who was it that won the Super Bowl last year? It was the nobody remembers either, huh? Broncos. They beat the Charlotte, whatever they are. I'm from the South, so I should know whoever they are. Grizzlies or something. I don't know. But they conquered them. How could they more than conquer them? Go into the clubhouse, pull them out on the field, and beat them up? Oh, we're conquering you. We're more than conquering you. Is that the way they do it? No. No. What does it mean? Well, two prize fighters fight. I mean, they're going toe to toe. Bang, bang. And finally, you know, bloody noses, broken ribs, on the face, the whole thing. And finally, one out points the other, and he gets a check for $30 million. I'd do that for $30 million. But he outpointed him. Didn't beat him, but he outpointed him. He got a check for $30 million. He got $30 million. What did he do with it? He took it home, gave it to his wife. She's more than a conqueror. She didn't do anything. She didn't go in the ring. She never had a blow on the face, never broken rib, but she got all the benefit. What are you trying to tell me, Brother Brock? I didn't climb up Galgotha's hill. I didn't lay my hand on the cross. I didn't get the spear in the side. But, oh, Hallelujah. honey, I get it all. Do you understand that? I get it all. I didn't suffer like he suffered. He paid the price for me. Come on, amen. And I cannot but rejoice and sing praises unto him. It means to sustain, support a foundation that, for instance, substance. Faith is the substance. Faith is the substance that we build our relationship to God. Well, you, well you, you don't know who. I don't care who you are. God doesn't care who you are. Your status in life means nothing to the Father. You know what God responds to? Well, how much money? I, no, he doesn't. How many times up or no? He responds to one thing, not to drama, but belief. Do you believe? Is that all? That's all. That's the simplicity of it all, to just believe. For all things are, all things are to him that believeth. Amen. He responds to the need. Now listen, he responds to the need of the believer, not the doubter. Because you must always understand, to be sure, certain, realize these thoughts. That God is always, now write this down, where he should be, when he should be doing what he should be doing. Did you get that? God is always what? Where he should be, when he should be, doing what he should be doing. You know what, what's amazing to me, Billy? It's, it's people, you know, they'll get a word. I'm sure you get a word. I've gotten a word. 
and, and without doubt, it comes out of my mouth. It comes out of my mouth. When God gives me a word, I go, when? How? What does that mean? It means you ain't going to get what you've been asking for. Amen. Because the word is trust. Ladies and gentlemen, the biggest statement I can make to you tonight is, how many of you want to be humble before the Lord? Lift up both hands way high and shout amen. amen. Purest form of humility is trust. Release. Here it is. It's yours. Because no temptation has taken you but such as is common to man. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God. Deuteronomy 3 and 9. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has taken you except such as common man, but God is faithful. I love Philip's translation. He says, but God knows your load limit. I drove down the road the other day and a big old truck came by. Man, he was loaded to the gills. I thought to myself, how in God's name? Can he carry such a load? Then I looked underneath and saw the brawny axles and, and the shocks, and I realized he's built to carry that load. And then suddenly the verse came to me, the verse in Psalm, the Lord. Oh, please, Father, help me to say this to you. I would love to be able to grab, grab every one of you and wrap you up to me and let you know and understand of a certainty. God knows your frame. It went right over your head. But God knows your frame. I can't take this. God knows your frame. He knows you can take it. When my baby boy died, watch it. In fact, the devil told me, you'll finish. You'll never make it. 30 years ago, my boy died. Oh, you'll never make it after this. Because my life was, my, my son rose and set. He rose and set. And my children, and David. David was my noise. If it was basketball season, he'd come in and try to hit the highest place on the ceiling. If it was football season, he'd come in and tackle his mother. Amen. <laughs> and he was the first one, Bill. He was the first one that would always meet me at the door when I came home. You'll never make it. That's what the devil said. You'll never. And almost I didn't. But in the midst of my storm, the Holy Ghost came roaring through lifted up a shadow against it. Come on, a standard against it. Rabatak gave me complete deliverance. I am here today, hallelujah, 30 years later. Devil said, I will never make it. Got news for you. Last year through Steve Brock Ministries, we won more than 300,000 souls to Jesus Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah. Why? Because I'm more than a conqueror. And greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Don't come through his gates with, the, with, with you know, your bottom lip out like a backboard. Don't come in singing your favorite song. Nobody knows. <laughs> but come in singing like they were singing a moment ago. In his presence. There's miracles in his presence. There's joy in his presence forevermore. Come on, saints. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How long am I supposed to preach, by the way? I got 11 minutes. I'm going to talk right. You're allowed to talk right. What is he faithful to do to keep his promise? Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our faith without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. The greatest verse of all, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and, and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. When? Hang on. God won't let you down. God will not let you be destroyed. Come on. Remember Abraham and Sarah. I mean, Abraham, 65, no, he's 75 years old, comes in under the tent, tells his 65-year-old wife, we're going to have a baby. You're bar you've been barren. There, no baby has come out of your womb, but we're going to have a baby. God said we're going to have a baby. You think that's the way he did it? Huh? Do you? No, he came into that tent and said, he's 75 years old. 
God just told me you're going to have a baby. I got news for you, friend. If she was pregnant, I'd lay right there and die. Come on, amen. I've had my children. I don't want any more. He came in. We're going to have a baby. You know what Sarah's response was? Get away from me. Don't you come near me. But ladies and gentlemen, that didn't happen till 30 years, 25, 30 years later. He's now 99, almost 100. She's 90. Hello? She's 90. She's 90. <laughs> Can anybody? She's 90. And she gets pregnant. You're getting so quiet on me on that thought. But it still staggers my mind that 90 years old, a woman got pregnant. I used to think that they ate certain kinds of food, and that's what did it. But then a friend of mine told me what happened. Sarai became Sarah. Abram became Abraham. H in the Israeli air, airport, if you alphabet. H in the Israeli alphabet gives you this sound. <sighs> I hope some of you are beginning to catch it. You begin to figure out what he did. You see, I thought it was, I'm being logical. Oh, logical me. Well, they ate certain foods and, you know, the earth was this and so. No, it was the power of the Holy Spirit. Because when they got the H, it was, what did he do? He breathed upon them. What happened when Jesus breathed upon the disciples? Receive ye the Holy Ghost. The world turned upside down. Look, let me tell you this. A, a, a young lady, 14 years old, got pregnant with no man. She got, no, she got pregnant with no man. She didn't know a man. And did you realize that this past December, the, the magazine that's so, they don't believe in God, don't want anything to do with God. I can't remember the name of it. Nash, no, no, no. Some of you young people ought to know that. Tell me, if you know it, shout it out at me. No, I can't remember. Not the National Enquirer, baby. <laughs> Not people. But if you can figure it out, figure it out. No, one of the most prominent magazines in this country, Rolling Stone. <laughs> huh? Na National Geographic? That's probably it. National Geographic. Totally against God. But they, this past December, you know what they said? They, they gave a pictorial look of Mary for 39 pages. And you know what, you know what they called them? They, they, didn't, they don't believe in God. They don't want nothing to do with Jesus. And definitely not the Holy Spirit. But they said, Mary, the most powerful woman in the world. And she died thousands of years ago. 2,000 years ago. And if God can do that, don't you think God can heal your body? If God spared not His own Son, but sent His own Son that you could have life and have it more abundantly, don't you think He can heal your body? Don't you think He can defeat some little old devil in your life? If you'll just declare, get out of my life, devil. I resist you now in the name of Jesus. Oh, let me say that to you loudly. Ladies and gentlemen, if he can put a 90-year-old woman full of a baby and then bring that baby forth and create. I got news for you. Israel was created by that 90-year-old woman. Just let it sit on you for a few moments. Well, can God do anything? If he can take a 90-year-old woman 
If he can take a 14-year-old child and 2,000 years later make her the most powerful woman in the world by a secular, un ungodly magazine, don't you think he can't take you out of the valley that you're in right now? Don't you think he can't heal your body? Don't you think he can't supply your need according to his riches and glory? Don't you think he can give you everything you need? Come on, amen, because God is faithful.